Good day, I'm here to present the measurements of the vertical distances. Lesson 12, which is all about leveling. Leveling. This is a process of directly or indirectly measuring vertical distances to determine the elevation of points or their differences in elevation. Importante ang leveling at mahalaga ito pagdating sa projects for engineering designs and constructions. At para malaman ng mas mabuti kung okay ba yung site for construction, kaya nagko-conduct ng leveling operations. Through the process of leveling, buildings, roads, canals, and other vertical and horizontal structures can be designed and laid out to best conform to the configuration of the ground. So lesson 12 includes the definition of terms, leveling methods, and the type of levels. First term is the level surface. It is a curved surface which at any point perpendicular to the direction of gravity or the plumb line. It is the best represented by the surface of a large body of still water. However, a level surface is not a plane and does not have a regular form because of local deviations of the plumb line. Level line. It is a curved line in a level surface, all points of which are normal to the direction of gravity and equidistant from the form from the center of the earth. Horizontal surface. It is a plane that is tangent to its level surface at a particular point. The horizontal surface is also perpendicular to the plumb line at the same point. Horizontal line A line in a horizontal plane which is tangent to a level line at one point. This line is perpendicular to the direction of the gravity at the point of tangency. Vertical line a vertical line at any point is a line parallel to the direction of gravity. It is exemplified by the direction taken by a string supporting a suspended plumb bob passing through a point. Mean sea level. It is an imaginary surface of the sea which is midway between high and low tides. It is taken as the reference surface to which most ground elevations are referred. Bitum. It is a convenient level surface coincident of parallel with mean sea level to which elevations of a particular area are referred. Any surface may be used as a datum when a relative's elevation over a limited area needs to be established. Elevation. For a particular point, its elevation is the vertical distance above or below the mean sea level or any other selected data. Difference in elevation. The difference in elevation between two points is the vertical distance between the two level surfaces in which points lie. So, para mas maintindihan yung mga terms kanina na ang mga binanggit ko, I have this illustration para makatulong sa pag-intindi sa atin. This line is what we call the reference line or the datum. So, yung mean sea level, as I've said earlier, so yung average ng sea tides, low tide and the high tide. So, ibig sabihin nasa ilalim siya ng reference line. And this line, from this point to the reference line, is what we call the elevation. So, ito namang curve line na ito, yung tinatawag natin na level line. And tangent sa kanya is yung horizontal line. And perpendicular to the gravity of the earth or the plumb line is also the horizontal line. Tapos ito naman yung plumb line. And this line, this, the vertical line, is the line from any point that is parallel to the plumb line. Tapos ito yung pinakatalang itsura ng horizontal surface and the horizontal line. The level surface and the level line. And I have this video from YouTube na 
introduction to leveling, sa tingin ko makakatulong sa atin sa pag-intindi ng mas maayos. Hi, I'm Jason from O10 Western Sydney Institute, the largest provider of online and distance education and training for TAFE New South Wales. O10 has created a series of how-to videos on site surveying using a level. Today we're at the Narimba campus demonstrating the use of a level with head teacher David. Hi, you, Dave. Hi, Jason. So, what are we going to be going through today? Jason, today I'm going to demonstrate the setup and use of the automatic level commonly used on building sites. Great. Well, I'll leave you to it then. Thank Thanks. you. Okay, the automatic level is one levelling instrument used on a building site and there's basically three components in its use. There's the automatic level itself, the tripod on which it sits, and when we take a reading, that's to the staff. Um, I'm now going to demonstrate the setup of the level and first we're going to place the tripod. Tripods come in two types. Firstly, there's this one, the dome top, and there's also a flat top. With the automatic level, we generally use a dome top tripod. The tripod legs have to be placed firmly in the ground, and we try and keep the top of the tripod level. The instrument's then removed from its case and placed on top of the tripod and it's fixed by a screw from underneath. So we can level the instrument using the dome top by loosening the screw and just moving it over the dome top until the bubble is in the middle of the circle. In the event we can't level it on the dome top, then we have to use the levelling screws. To do that, we need to place the axis of the telescope parallel to the line between two levelling screws. Then by turning the levelling screws both in or both out, never in the same direction, we bring the bubble adjacent to the centre of the circle. We then rotate the instrument 90 degrees and use the third levelling screw to bring the bubble into the middle of the circle. We can then check just by rotating the instrument around to a few locations to check that the bubble remains in the circle. These are the features of the automatic level. First we have the telescope which contain the optics for the level, the eyepiece which we view through and within those we have some crosshairs. This is the focus screw to bring our target into a focus and here we have a fine adjustment or fine tangent screw to make very small adjustments to the direction of the level. Sitting on here we have the bullseye level which we level the instrument to and here we have a prism which allows us to view that bullseye target from the horizontal direction. The automatic level is a sensitive piece of equipment which must be cared for. The instrument can't be dropped and must be transported in its case well secured. When setting up the level, ideally you will set it up at eye height, not as I'm demonstrating now where I have to stoop down to read through the level. When moving around the instrument, be careful not to place any pressure or put your weight on the tripod legs. This will push the level out of adjustment. And when moving around the tripod, make sure we don't trip over the legs. And even placing pressure on soft ground adjacent to one of the legs may cause the instrument to go out of level. Thanks, Dave. So what we've just seen is setting up the tripod, placing the instrument, and then levelling the instrument. So what are we going to see next, Dave? Jason, now I need to show you how to take a reading through the instrument. Next is 
the leveling methods. These methods may be undertaken either directly or indirectly in the field. The principle involved in each method differ in some aspects. Also, they may differ with respect to the type of instruments, the procedure employed, and the attainable degrees of precision. Traditional methods of leveling have been used for many years and they still continue to be useful in the present time. My example of my methods is direct leveling, trigonometric leveling, and the bar barometric leveling that we discussed in the slides. First example is the direct or spirit leveling. Direct leveling is the commonly employed method of determining the elevation of points some distance apart by a series of setups of a leveling instrument along a selected route. This method is also referred as a spirit leveling since the device used is a spirit level. So yung direct leveling is yung kinoconsider as the most precise method. Kasi siya yung ginagamit kapag kailangan ng high degree of accuracy. And this is an example of expert level. Next one is the reciprocal leveling. Recipro reciprocal leveling is the process of accurately determining the difference in elevation between two invisible, intervisible points located at a considerable distance apart and between which points leveling could not be performed in the usual manner. This method provides a faster method of determining differences in elevation between two points, and when it is carefully conducted, it could be precise as the direct leveling. This is the reciprocal leveling is commonly ginagawa kapag ka yung may, pag may ilog or river sa pagita ng dalawa. So, I have, I have video para ipakita kung paano ginagawa or kinakondak yung reciprocal leveling. Reciprocal leveling. In this video, let us see how to do reciprocal leveling across the river. Fix the instrument at one bank of a river, that is station P, and perform all the temporary adjustments. Two leveling staffs are placed at both banks of a river. Let us see the formation of level line, horizontal line, line of sight. Level line is a curved line normal to plumb lines at all points. It lies in a level surface. Horizontal line is always perpendicular to plumb line. It is tangent to a level line and it lies in horizontal plane. Line of sight is defined as the intersection of the cross pass to the optical center of the objective lens. The staff reading near the instrument is denoted as A1 and the staff reading on the other bank is denoted as B1. The staff is sighted and the A1 reading is noted in the field book. Then, the staff on other bank is cited and noted in the field book. Now, the instrument alone is shifted to other bank of the river while the leveling staff remains in the same positions. Cite the two leveling staffs from station Q. The staff reading near station Q is noted as A2 and the staff reading on another bank of the river is noted as B2. Cite the leveling staffs and note the A2, B2 readings in the field book. The true level difference is given by the formula D is equal to A1 minus B1 plus A2 minus B2 by 2.
substituting all the values we get the true difference d as minus 1.595 Total error E is given by the formula E is equal to A1 minus B1 minus A2 minus B2 by 2. After substituting, we get the total error as minus 0.025. Number 3 is the profile leveling. This method of leveling is used to determine differences in elevation between points at designated short measured intervals along an established line to provide data from, a, from which a vertical section of the ground surface can be plotted. As yung profile leveling ay usually ginagawa sa paggawa ng mga kalsada, pagsuka, pagkuha ng sukat, or elevation sa bawat interval sa kahabaan ng kalsada. Next is the term trigonometric leveling. This method of leveling is employed in determining by trigonometric computations in difference in elevation between two points from measurements of its horizontal or slope distance and the vertical angle between the points. Trigonometric leveling is the horizontal at one point is per perpendicular at the vertical at another point, and the level distance is practically equal to the horizontal. Next is Stadia leveling. Stadia leveling conv combines features of direct leveling with those of trigonometric leveling. This method of leveling is in fact a form of trigonometric leveling. It can provide reasonable accuracy for preliminary surveys, mapping, and rough leveling where quick measurements are needed. Let's look at the following figure, okay? So here is your instrument, a theodolite or a transit. Uh, the, the instrument should be horizontal. Okay, and uh, on the cross hair, you will see two stadia hairs. Dalawang ganyan, the upper stadia hair and the lower stadia hair. Ito yung makikita mo sa telescope ng iyong instrument. Okay, okay and then the instrument will, uh, you will see the intercept, ano, intercept of these stadia hairs at the rad. Okay, we have a rad here, stadia rad. Okay, and by the use of trigonometry uh, and uh, similar triangles, we are going to approximately uh, measure or calculate the distance between the instrument and the stadiarad. Okay, so the formula that we are going to use is D is equal to KS plus C. D is the distance from the telescope or the instrument to the rod. C is the stadia constant, okay? So this is the distance from the center of the instrument to the principal focus. Usually, this the value of C is zero for internal focusing telescope. Okay, on the other hand, is the stadia interval factor of the instrument. Okay, this is inherent to the instrument and usually, uh, the manufacturers take into account of the value of K and K is usually 100. Okay, and S is the stadia interval, the difference between the upper and lower stadia hair reading. Okay, bali, that, that is the difference between the upper and the lower stadia hairs. Yan yung S natin, stadia interval. Barometric leveling. Barometric leveling involves the determination of differences in elevation between points by measuring the variation in atmospheric pressure at which each point by means of a barometer. This leveling method depends on the basic principle that differences in elevation are proportional to the differences in atmospheric pressure. And barometric leveling is an indirect leveling.
Next one is the cross section leveling. In highway or rail highway or rail road constructions, it is often necessary to obtain a representation of the ground surface on either side of the center line. Short profiles at the right angles to the line of work are usually plotted at regular intervals for this purpose. Cross-section le leveling is another method of profile leveling. The term cross-section generally refers to a relatively short profile view of the ground, which is drawn perpendicular to the root center line of a highway or other types of linear projects. Last one is the burrow pit leveling. Burrow pit leveling is a method of determining the, the relative elevation of points in burrow pit excavations for the purpose of calculating volumes of earthwork. The last topic for this lesson 12, the types of levels. There are various types of instruments used in leveling work. Although those instruments may differ somewhat in design, each can be used to establish a horizontal line of sight by means of telescope fitted with a set of crosshairs and level bubble. First type of level is the dump to level. The dump to level is the most widely used direct leveling instrument. It has a long telescope which is rigidly attached to the level bar. The telescope, which can be rotated to the 360 degrees, fixes the direction of the line of sight. Also, this dump to level is the most commonly used instrument in leveling. In this level, the telescope is restricted against movement in its horizontal plane and the telescope is fixed to its support. Second one is the Y level. The Y level is very identical to the dumpy level, and the only distinct difference between these two is in the manner by which telescopes are attached to the supporting level bar. The Y level has a detachable telescope which rests in supports called Ys. This level consists Y shaped frames which support the telescope. Compared to the dumpy level, Adjustments can be rapidly tested in Y level, but there may be a chance of frictional wear of open parts of the level. Next is the builder's level. This instrument is used primarily in the different phases of building. Construction where a high degree of precision is not a primary requisite. It is often called a construction level or an architect's level. The level vial is not sensitive as in other levels and its telescope has a much lesser magnifying power. This level also functions similar to a transit option, but with a few distinctions. This level can be unlocked and travel around a horizontal plane, so it can be adjusted as a necessary for building projects. The next one is the automatic level. This type of level has become popular for conventional leveling work because of the ease and speed of their operation. It does not use level vial and its ability to level itself depends upon the action of complex pendulum and prism device. This level is also like a dump level. In this case, the telescope is fixed with support. Next one is the tilting level. This type of leveling instrument can be tilted or rotated about its horizontal axis. Tilting levels are commonly employed for, a, for very precise leveling operations and in other general leveling work. It is also equipped with a horizontal circle which makes it suitable for layout and construction surveys. The main advantage of this kind of level, it is it is useful when the few observations are to be taken with one step of level. 
geodetic level. The geodetic level is basically another type of tilting level. They are employed in first order leveling work, which extreme precision is important requirement. The instrument is equipped with stadia hairs in addition to the standard vertical and horizontal cross hairs to make it suitable for tree wire leveling. The last one is transit as a level. The engineer's transit has always been referred to as the universal serving instrument because of its variety of use. It can be provided results which are fairly precise although not as good at, as those obtained with conventional levels. This is because the transit has a relatively shorter telescope and level vial. This transit level uses a telescope to find a level line across a long distance. And that's all for lesson 12. Thank you. So, this is the lesson 13 of measurements of vertical distances. First one po ay ang leveling rods. A leveling rod is a graduated rod which is used for measuring the vertical distance between the line of sight through a leveling instrument and the point whose elevation is either required or known. Rods are made of wood fiberglass, or metal, and have graduations in meters and decimals, which start from zero at the bottom and extending upward to lengths of three or four meters. Leveling rods may be either of the following. First one po ay ang self-reading rod. This is the most commonly used type of leveling rod. It can be read directly by the instrument man through the telescope by noting the apparent. Then, next po ay ang target rod. This type of rod has sliding target which is set and read by a rod man at the position selected by the instrument man. Other types of rods. First one po ay ang Rods named after cities or states. Leveling rods named after cities or states include the Philadelphia, Detroit, Florida, Boston, New York, and San Francisco rods. The Philadelphia rod that is sh shown in the picture is a combination of self-reading and target rod and is the commonly used type of rod. Next po ay ang rod ribbon, hindi po red ribbon. This is an improvised type of rod used in leveling work. The graduations in this rod are marked either on canvas or metal strips, which are attached to a long piece of selected lumber by staples. Next is precise rod. So, the precise rod is a form of rod ribbon which uses a graduated in-bar strip permanently fastened to a 4 meter long wooden or metal frame. It is equipped with a rod level to allow the rodman to hold the rod vertically when used. Next is geodetic rod. This rod is similar to a precise rod except that a nil bar metal is nil bar metal strip is used instead of in bar so nil bar is an alloy of metal with a very low coefficient of linear expansion then next po ay ang tape rod this seldomly used rod is also known as the automatic rod it is used advantageously when numerous elevations are to be determined from a single setup of the leveling instrument. The tape rod is useful in profile leveling, in taking cross sections, 
and for the different phases involved in building construction and layout. So, yan po ay ang rod level. The rod level is a device used for fast and correct plumbing of a leveling rod. It is L-shaped, as shown in the picture, in design and consists of a small circular spirit level fastened to the rod or to a small bracket held against the side of the rod. When the bull's eye bubble is centered, the rod is plumb or correctly held vertical. Next is a target. Hindi po yung tinataman sa mga shooting games po. Ang target po ay a small device attached to the rod when extremely long sights make direct reading of the rod difficult or impossible. So, targets are made of metal and may be circular, elliptical, or rectangular in shape. So, targets are used not only on extreme long sights, but also when the rod is held in poorly lighted places, where atmospheric conditions may cause adverse effects on reading a rod accurately. So, next po ay ang telescope. The telescope of a surveying instrument is a metal tube containing a system of lenses which are used to fix the direction of the line of sight and in magnifying the apparent size of objects in its field of view. Ayan po. So, number one, objective lens. It is a compound lens composed of crown and flint glass mounted in the objective end of the telescope and has its optical axis concentric with the tube axis. Its function is to allow light, light rays to enter the telescope and form an image of the object sighted within its field of view. So, number two po ay ang eyepiece. Ang eyepiece is a, for, is a form of microscope containing either two or four lenses and is used to enlarge altogether the image and the crosshairs. It allows the instrument man to sight and read accurately the gradations on a leveling rod. So, number three po ay ang crosshairs. The crosshairs consist of a pair of lines which are perpendicular to each other and are used to define the instrument's line of sight. In newer instruments, crosshairs are ruled and etched on a thin glass plate with dark metal filaments deposited to make the lines visible. So, magnification. The magnification of a telescope is the ratio of the apparent size of an object viewed through a telescope to its size as seen by the unaided eye from the same distance. It may also be taken as the amount of which an object is increasing in is, is increased in apparent size. The amount of magnification is fixed by the ratio of the focal length of the objective and eyepiece lenses. Magnification is expressed in terms of diameters. For most levels, the magnification may vary from 25 to 40 diameters. High magnification is not always an advantage since it limits the field of view of the telescope and reduces the brightness of illumination of the viewed object. So next po ay ang level vial as you can see in the picture. A level vial is a sealed graduated glass glass tube containing some amount of liquid and small air bubble. It is used to determine the direction of gravity. The type of liquid used must have a low viscosity and freezing point. It must be able to move quickly with very slight shifting or tilting of the vial and should be relatively stable in length under normal variations in temperature. Next po ay ang coincidence bubble. 
So, this type of bubble is used on most modern and precise instruments such as the tilting and automatic levels. It employs an optical device which splits the bubble longitudinally and then turns one end around to make it appear adjacent to the other end. So, next po ay ang tripods. Hindi po siya yung ginagamit sa pang selfie. So, tripods serve as a base to prevent movement of the instrument after it is set up. A tripod consists of three wooden or aluminum legs, which are securely, securely fastened to the tripod head by means of a hinge joint. The legs are spread wide enough to provide a stable platform for the instrument. At each end of a tripod is attached a, a pointed piece of metal called shoe. Measurement of Vertical Forces, Lesson number 14. So, in this lesson, malaki yung part na ginagampanan ng mga instrument man since they are the person whose duty is to set up, level, and operate surveying instruments. Kasi sa lesson na tong itatakal natin is yung how to set up the level and kung paano i-operate yung mga instruments na ginagamit natin in surveying. Setting up the level. The leveling instrument may be set up at any suitable or desired location. When starting a leveling operation, the instrument man should first consider where he intends to position the instrument. So the level is then pulled out from its box by holding the leveling bar or base plate and it must be screwed securely onto the tripod head. So, kailangan maingat yung pag-screw ng level. And then, the instrument should fit snugly and bear firmly. Kasi, if maluwag yung pagkakakabit sa kanya, pwede siyang mag or be unstable. And if super higpit naman, due to excessive pressure, may hirapan siyang i-unscrew and it may cause some damage. So, dapat yung sakto lang. Solid ground should be selected when setting up the instrument. Muddy and wet areas should be avoided. Kasi yung mga areas na yan, it may cause serious errors in leveling work. And to set up, tripod legs are spread so that the foot plate will be approximately horizontal. And then the legs should be far enough apart to a rigid setup. And the pad firmly pushed siya into the ground para steady, like hindi magalaw-galaw. And then yung telescope must be at convenient site. When setting up instrument on the hillside or along a slope, one of its legs should extend uphill and to downhill. It is also advisable for the instrument man to carry along a hand level to determine the approximate height. And para mas lalo nyo siyang maintindihan, I'll play a video regarding setting up the level. Hi, I'm Jason from O10 Western Sydney Institute, the largest provider of online and distance education and training for TAFE New South Wales. Ojan has created a series of how-to videos on site surveying using a level. Today we're at the Narimba campus demonstrating the use of a level with head teacher David. How are you, Dave? Hi, Jason. So, what are we going to be going through today? Jason, today I'm going to demonstrate the setup and use of the automatic level commonly used on building sites. Great. I'll leave you to it then. Thank you. Okay, the automatic level is one leveling instrument used on a building site. And there's basically three components in its use. There's the automatic level itself, the tripod on which it sits, and when we take a reading, that's to the start. Um, I'm now going to demonstrate the setup of the level, and first we're going to place the tripod. The tripods come in two types. Firstly, there's this one, the dome top. 
There are, there's also a flat top. With the automatic level, we generally use a dome top tripod. The tripod legs have to be placed firmly in the ground. And we try and keep the top of the tripod level. The instrument sent removed from its case and placed on top of the tripod. And it's fixed by a screw from underneath. So we can level the instrument using the dome top by loosening the screw and just moving it over the dome top until the bubble is in the middle of the circle. In the event we can't level it on the dome top, then we have to use the leveling screws. To do that, we need to place the axis of the telescope parallel to a line between two leveling screws. Then by turning the leveling screws both in or both out, never in the same direction, we bring the bubble adjacent to the centre of the circle. We then rotate the instrument 90 degrees and use the third leveling screw to bring the bubble into the middle of the circle. We can then check just by rotating the instrument around to a few locations to check that the bubble remains in the circle. These are the features of the automatic level. First we have the telescope which contains the optics for the level, the eyepiece which we view through, and within those we have some crosshairs. This is the focus screw to bring our target into a focus. And here we have a fine adjustment or fine tangent screw to make very small adjustments to the direction of the level. Sitting on here we have the bullseye level, which we level the instrument to. And here we have a prism, which allows us to view that bullseye target from the horizontal direction. The automatic level is a sensitive piece of equipment which must be cared for. The instrument can't be dropped and must be transported in its case well secured. When setting up the level, ideally you will set it up at eye height, not as I'm demonstrating now where I have to scoop down to read through the level. When moving around the instrument, be careful not to place any pressure or put your weight on the tripod legs. This will push the level out of adjustment. And when moving around the tripod, make sure we don't trip over the legs and even placing pressure on soft ground adjacent to one of the legs may cause the instrument to go out of that. Thanks, Dave. So what we've just seen is setting up the tripod, placing the instrument, and then levelling the instrument. So we'll see you next time. Jason, now I need to show you how to take a reading through the... Next is leveling the instrument. A considerable amount in leveling the instrument will be needed by a beginner. It is only by constant practice the one would really be able to feel and experience the proper turning of leveling screws to bring the bubble in a level vial to its center. And there are procedures followed in leveling each type of instrument are outlined as follows. The first one is the instruments with four leveling screws. The bubble is first centered approximately over one pair of opposite leveling screws. Time is wasted by exact centering in the first attempt since the bubble will be thrown off during cross leveling. So the telescope is next turned 90 degrees either clockwise or counterclockwise and the composition siya over the two other opposite leveling screws. The bubble is again centered approximately and this is the procedure that 
is repeated about three or more times with increasing care until the bubble finally remains centered in any direction the telescope is pointed and then the thumb and the index finger of each hands are used to turn the screws remember that when the leveling screws are turned the bubble moves in the direction of motion of the left thumb and the next one is instruments with three leveling screws for this instrument the telescope is turned until the bubble tube is positioned parallel to the line through any two of the screws the bubble is then centered on the level vial by turning these two screws in opposite directions so as i have said kanina the thumb and the index finger of each hand are used to turn the screw and also the bubble will still move in the direction of motion of the left thumb and then the telescope is next rotated about the vertical axis of the instrument so that the bubble tube is brought perpendicular naman siya to a line through the two screws turned earlier again the bubble is brought carefully to center by means of the third screw alone so at yung ano niya, illustration and then the instrument is leveled if the bubble remains centered on the level vial when the telescope is brought back to its first position if yung bubble is not remain within the center graduations the process is repeated until it remains in the center for any position of the telescope this method of repeated centering will only work if the level vial is in adjustment so in ano naman, in automatic and tilting levels a three screw head and a circular bull's eye level are usually employed prior to leveling it is important that the legs of the tripod are positioned so that the leveling head is nearly horizontal and the bubble in the circular level is brought as close to the center of the vial with the telescope in any convenient position the bull's eye bubble is centered in one direction by operating two leveling screws it is then centered in the other direction by means of the third screw. So the process of centering the bubble is done by alternately turning two screws and then the other one singly. The telescope does not have to turn to any direction during the process of leveling. Next is holding the leveling rod. The leveling rod is held on point by a rodman when a sight is to be taken on it. To obtain the correct distance from the line of sight to the point on which the rod is placed, it is, ex it is extremely important that the rod be held plumb when the reading is made. So, ang duty naman dito ng instrument man is to check the rod by observing through the telescope and nothing nothing if it is held parallel to the vertical cross here if yung rod is not correctly plumbed or like measured magigive siya ng signal to plumb the rod and important na accurate yung operation because it increases the speed with which the work may be performed the red man either stands beside the rod or behind it. He should face the instrument man and see to it that the rod is nearly at right angles to the line sight. So, just like nitong, ano, nitong figure, ay, nyan yung figure, ganyan dapat yung illustration how to hold a leveling rod in high precision service the leveling rods are used are equipped with a rod level 
Although this device is not generally used in an uh, ordinary leveling work, um, advisable pa rin siya to use one when inexperienced rodmen are employed. A rod level is securely held against the back of rod if it may be permanently attached to it. Uh, it should not in any way obstruct the rod graduations. Next is taking a rod reading. Before readings are taken on a rod, it is important to first examine how the graduations are indicated to it. Uh, the metric rod is graduated in centimeters and numerals are indicated for every full meter and decimeter mark. So, the single dot shown below, dito, yan. Each numeral indicates that the readings taken on it are in the 1M range. Since most rods extend to lengths of either 3 or 4 meters, and then 3 or 4 dots are used to correspondingly identify each meter and decimeter graduation. Each blackened graduation and each piece between graduation is 1 cm or 0.01 m high. The full meter marks are identified on the rod by large numerals which are usually printed in red. The decimeter marks are, at, I, are identified by smaller black painted numerals. So, sa fig figure na to, the readings for six different positions are given as examples. It will be noted the readings to two, two thousandths of a meter are estimated as in D. Ito, yung D. If and F, which are 2.165 M and 2.235 M. Next is steps to perform in taking a rod reading. Number one is position the rod. The leveling rod is held by the rod man on the designated point whose elevation is to be determined. He stands beside or behind the rod, faces it toward the instrument man, and holds it as nearly plumb as possible. Since the directions and signals emanate from the instrument man, the red man should always focus his attention on him. Number two is focus on the rod. The instrument man aims and focuses the focuses the telescope on the rod and at the same time seeing to it that the bubble continues to remain in the center of the level by vial. He makes use of the vertical hair to check if the rod is held plump. And lastly is read the rod. If the self-reading rod is used, the instrument man observes directly from the telescope and records the reading indicated by the line of sight. The reading is shown by the apparent position of the horizontal cross hair on the rod. So the view of the telescope is similar to the to this figure. When using a target rod, the process of reading is identical except that the target is set, raised or lowered, so that the horizontal cross here bisects it, while the bubble is in the center of the level, level bile. The instrument man directs the setting of the target, but the rod is read by the rod man. It is extremely important that a check is made on the centering of the bubble before and after readings are taken on the rod. Next is determining difference in elevation. This illustrates a typical setup for determining difference in 
acceleration between two points A and B using the engineer's level and leveling rod. And these are the sequence of steps involved are as follows. Number one is, the instrument is set up and leveled at a point about halfway between A and B. Second is, slide on the rod held vertically at point A and record the rod reading in the given illustration. The rod reading is at A is 2 meters. So, nandito yun sa part na yun. Ito, 2 meters dito sa A. And then, this means that point A on the ground is 2M below the horizontal plane of reference or line of sight established by the level. Third is rotate the telescope carefully about the vertical axis and sight on a rod held vertically at B. Record the rod reading at B. To avoid instrumental errors, only one should be used during the measurement. The illustrated rod reading at B is 3.5 M which means that point B is on the ground is 3.5 M below the same horizontal plane of, refer of reference. So, dito daw sa B I, 3.5. The difference in eleva elevation between points A and B is determined by noting the difference in their respective rod readings or 3.5 minus 2 is equal to 1.5 m. This value corresponds to the vertical distance between the two imaginary level surfaces assumed to, to be horizontal lines passing through points A and B. Next is the length of sight. Ay, di pa pala. Balik tayo din sa illustration. From this illustration, it can easily be seen that point B, to, tong point B is lower in elevation than point A since its vertical distance measured downward from the established line of sight is greater than that taken at point a. Also, if the elevation of point A is known, the elevation of, of point B may be determined by subtracting the computed difference in elevation from the elevation of A. The procedure just described where the engineer's level and a leveling rod were employed for measuring differences in elevation and it is called direct or spirit leveling. So, next na. Lengths of sight. It is always best to take sights at moderate lengths to attain speed and accuracy in leveling work. However, very short or extremely long sights should be avoided. The most suitable sight lengths will depend upon the required degree of precision. The surface of the terrain, the type of instrument used, and upon the distance at which the rod remains readable to the instrument man. So, under the ordinary conditions, the length of sight should not exceed about 90 meters, where elevations to the nearest 0.001 m are desired. Beyond this length, it is difficult to read the rod accurately and the errors caused by curvature and refraction have to be considered. Irregular refraction during summer months usually causes boiling of the air. In such a condition, the refraction is quite large and precise results could not be expected when very long sights are taken. 
they should be made considerably shorter, especially if the line of sight clears the ground surface by only as much as one half meter. So, <coughs> excuse me. So extra long sights, however, may be taken where the terrain is fairly level, and then ang um, only an ordinary degree of accuracy is required, and the completion time is of primary importance. Very short sights naman cannot be avoided when the ground surface rises or falls rapidly, such as in mountainous areas or yung mga elevated na areas, and where the terrain is significantly rough. Next, waving the rod. By, by aligning the rod with the vertical cross here, the instrument man can determine if a rod is held in a vertical plane passing through the instrument. He cannot, however, tell if the rod is tipped forward or backward in this plane. This can only be accomplished by waving the rod. The procedure is used to determine whether the rod is plumb when a reading is taken on it. It is accomplished by slowly waving or tilting the top of the rod through an arc, first toward the instrument and then away from it. The instrument man the man it will appear the that the cross hair is moving up and down the rod. So as the rod weaves weave as the rod weave the instrument man takes no note of the rod readings which will alternately increase and decrease. The minimum reading observed is considered as the correct rod reading at the particular point cited. So when the long rod is used, it is always advisable to wave the rod if the target rod is used. It must be raised or lowered until there is found just one position when the target raises, rises as high as the line of sight. Well, the rod is being waved. So, ito yung level. And then, ayan yung horizontal line of sight. The direction of the tilt. Rod tilted forward. Rod tilted backward. And rod position with least reading. Next is carrying the instrument. The level should always be kept in a box when it is not used. It should remain in its carrying case when transported to the work site or when it has to be moved to another distant setup or over rough terrain. The level does not have to be detached from the tripod when transferring to another nearby station, provided that it is securely fastened to the tripod and it is carried properly. In open spaces, the level may be carried on the shoulder in preferably a near vertical position. The spindle is clumped slightly so that the telescope does not rotate when carried. In densely forested areas, the level should be cradled between the arms and held close to one's left or right chest. It must be in full view of the person carrying it to avoid heating into trees and underbrush. The spindle should be unclumped to allow the telescope to turn freely and give way readily, readily, readily to any pressure or possible collision with an object. So next is the arm and hand signals. An arm and hand signals is any gestures or motion that conveys information or gives a command, direction, or warning. The use of signals is essential in surveying since it is usually difficult or impossible at times to communicate verbally in the field due to distance, wind conditions, and surrounding noise. So, in, in many instances, it is necessary or practical to use signals rather 
than call out direction since much of the works involves long sites where yung calling to one another is impractical. Like, mas convenient talaga if yung mga survey party members uses arm and hand signals to communicate with each other. Any set of signals which can be mutually understood by the members of a survey party are acceptable. In surveying, no standard set of hand signals has as yet been ex accepted. It is usually left upon the surveyors themselves to devise their own signals. Each survey party should adopt some set of definite signals as this will speed up and improve the efficiency of surveying procedures and operations. So, these are the signal used to transmit the following commands. First is move right or left. The instrument man uses this signal to direct the rod man to move either to left or to the right. The desired direction of the movement is pointed out by the forefinger. So, ayan yung illustration kung paano siya ginagawa. Next is give us sight. The right and left hand is raised up and is held for a moment in a vertical position. Right and left. So, dapat maran dito, dito nakataas. All right. The level man extends both arms horizontally and moves them up or down. When both arms are brought still and horizontal, it is meant to transmit a command to hold steadily. So, yan. And extend niya yung both arms niya horizontally and moves them up or down. Number four, this is a point. The rod man raises the rod and holds it in a horizontal position over his head. It could also be taken mean give me a line. So yung rod man in a raise niya lang daw yung rod and hold it in a horizontal position. So naka horizontal over his head. Move back. The instrument man uses this signal to direct the rod man to move back farther. He transmits the command by raising his right hand ito, with the palm. Naka open yung palm niya. Facing toward the rod man and then moving it into a horizontal position with his palm face down. Number six. Pick up instruments when a new setup of the level is desired the shift of party signals the instrument man by first extending extending both arms downward and then raising them up quickly as though an object is being lifted so, ayun yung, ito yung illustration. So, di ba yung shift of the party? Ayun yung person na responsible for the overall direction, supervision, and operational control of the survey party. And siya din yung responsible for its logistical and technical requirements and problems of a field survey operations. Number seven, raise or lower target. The instrument man motions to the rod man by either raising his arm raise niya yung arm niya above his shoulder to raise the rod or by dropping his arm below his waist to lower the target when he raised or lowered target approaches the desired setting the arm is brought back to a horizontal position next is come in the shift of the party or the instrument man uses this signal to direct any member of the survey party to cop in or assemble. It is executed by move, moving the arm into a circular motion starting from below the waist to the front of his face. Ito, below the waist up to front of his face. 
Number nine is plumb the rod. The hand is extended vertically above the head and moves slowly in the direction it is desired to plumb the rod. Next, establish a turning point. To establish a turning point, the arm is swung slowly in a circle above his head. Ayan, ginaganan niya lang. Number 11. This is a turning point. To identify a turning point, the leveling rod or range pole is raised. Ito yung range pole. Nere overhead in a horizontal position. It is then lowered into a vertical position and held on the point. Next is wave the rod. The instrument man holds his arm, arm above his head and continuously waves back, waves back and forth. Face the rod. This is a signal given out by the instrument man to direct the rod man to face the rod towards the line of the sight. And then it is executed by raising both arms. Yan, naka-raise yung both, both arms niya. Above his head and twisting both hands back and forth. So for the last part, um, I will play a video again regarding arms and hand signals for you all to better understand how it is performed. Ay, may last pa pala. Mayroon pa pala. Reverse the rod. The command to reverse the rod is transmitted to the rod man by extending the arms above the head and slowly rotating both arms in a circular motion towards one side of the body. So, yan. Number 15, move forward. From a position where both arms are extended horizontally, the arms are slowly bent on the elbows and the hands raised into a vertical position. This signal is used to direct the rod man to move forward. Yan, naka-extend horizontally. Tapos naka-bent yung elbows. And then yung last, Last is, use the long rod. To give signal to use the long rod, the instrument man extends both arms downward naman. And extend niya downward, then slowly raises it over his head. So, ito na. For the last part, magpa-play ulit ako ng video regarding arms and hand signals para mas lalo niyang, niyang maintindihan kung paano ito pinaperform. Horizontally and moves them up or down. The move arms are not still and 
Okay, um, for today's video, um, we will talk about we will talk about lesson 15.1 and lesson 15.2. So lesson 15.1, sources of error in leveling. So ano nga po muna yung leveling? Um, leveling ay proseso kung saan makikita yung pinagkaiba ng height ng dalawa o mas madami pong bagay. Although may mga safety precautions at magagaling ang mga nagsusukat, ay hindi talaga may iwasan magka-error. Uh, the accuracy of leveling work may be affected by numerous factors. The principal sources of error in leveling work may emanate from either instrumental, personal, or natural errors. Ayan, nandiyan sa picture yung tatlong principal errors. So, in this slide, um, uh, makikita natin yung mga reason kung bakit nangyayari yung tatlong principal errors. Sa instrumental errors, meron tayo tatlong reasons. Una yung instrument, out of adjustment, sunod yung rod nut standard length, sunod yung defective tripod. Sunod naman yung personal errors, um, may anin, bubble nut centered, parallax, faulty rod readings, rod nut held plumb, incorrect setting of target, unequal backside and foresight distances. And last, sa natural errors, meron ding anim, yung curvature of the earth, atmospheric refraction, temperature variations, wind, settlement of the instrument, and last this yung faulty turning points. Next slide. Um, instrumental error. Um, this error are attributed to imperfections in the instruments, either from faults in their manufacture or from improper adjustment. So, sa leveling, kaya lang nagkaka-instrumental error ay either defective yung tripod, hindi standard yung length ng leveling rod or sa lang adjustment ng ginamit na instrument. So, sa unang um, reason kung bakit nangyayari yung instrumental error ay yung instrumental out of adjustment. So, the most common instrumental error is caused by the level being out of adjustment. Particularly significant is when the line of sight of the telescope is not parallel to the axis of the level vial. The line of sight will be inclined either upward or downward when the bubble is not brought to the center of the tube. When a reading is taken on a rod, the result is an error consistently either plus or minus and with a magnitude which is proportional to the distance between the instrument and the rod. So, may iwasan or malilesen natin to by frequently testing the instrument and, pinapan and if pinapanatili natin na maganda ang adjustment nito. Mas malilesen din natin magka-error if yung backside at foresight distances nito ay nearly, equ nearly equal. Sunod naman yung rod nut standard length. Um, it is possible to have inaccurate graduations or divisions on a rod. This is usually due to imperfection in their manufacture. Inaccurate rod graduations can cause errors in measured vertical distances similar to those resulting from incorrect markings on a tape. So, ayun. Dito daw sa rod nut standard length, kung mali na agad yung length ng rod, edi eh maglilid na agad yun ng systematic error sa leveling work. Tapos, importante din na ikumpara yung haba ng rod sa standardized steel tape Periodically. Another is, dapat ma-handle to ng may pag-iingat, lalo na kung maputik yung lugar na pagsusukatan. Kasi if ang rodman ay hindi maingat, then possible na may dumikit na putik sa ilalim nito na pwede mag-lead ng error sa leveling. <clears throat> Last naman ay yung defective tripod. The movement of the level due to settling of the tripod legs can cause possible errors in leveling work. The tripod usually settles in soft ground or due to vibrations caused by passing vehicular traffic. Bolts and nuts at hinge joints of the tripod should be checked regularly and tightened. So, dito sa defective tripod, um, importante na lang yung set up yung tripod ng matibay. If not, it can lead to erroneous measurement at aksaya ng oras. Dapat din i-check yung mga bolts para maiwasan yung vibration sa leg nito at last ay dapat iwasan na nakapatong ang tripod sa smooth surfaces like concrete para hindi madumulas yung legs nito at matumba yung tripod. Next. So, personal error. 
Um, although personal errors occur largely due to the limitations of the senses of touch, sight, or hearing of individuals, the skills, training, and teamwork of the members of leveling party are almost major, major factors to be considered. So, madalas ito mangyari dahil sa mga erroneous manipulation at pagiging mapabaya sa paggamit ng instrument habang nagsusukat. So, yung una ay yung bubble not centered. Um, road readings will be in error when the bubble is not centered in the level vial. The magnitude of the errors depends on how sensitive the vial has been designed. There are various conditions in the field which may cause the bubble not to remain centered. It could be caused by a tripod leg settling in soft ground, the instrument may not be leveled properly, or it may be out of adjustment. Um, these are factors which could be all attributed to carelessness on the part of the instrument man. Kung ang instrument ay nakaleveled and set up na, dapat iwasan itong galawin. If hindi, necessary yung reason. Dapat yung tripod din nito ay hindi hagi pag nagsighting na. Kapag wala sa gitna yung bubble, sa paglayo ng sinusukat ay sa paglaki din yung error. Kaya dapat pagtuunan ng pansin at ingat. So next is parallax. Um, if a pressure gauge or any graduated circular matter is viewed from different angles, one will notice that a number of slightly divergent value could be read. This is due to the effect of the parallax. The effect of parallax is to cause relative displacement between the image of the crosshairs and the image formed by the focusing lens. Sa parallax, pwede natin tumaywasan kapag ang estimate natin sa pointer at scale ay sakto at parehas lang silang nasa isang plane. So, next slide. Faulty rod things. Um, the instrument man at times may misread the number of meters and decimals when taking a rod reading. An incorrect rod readings is usually the result of the length of sight, poor weather conditions, and the skill of the instrument man and the rod man. Um, sa faulty rod readings, um, ang mga gamit na instrument dito sa vertical measurement ay equipped ng tatlong horizontal hair. Tapos yung upper hair papuntang middle hair ay dapat equal sa distance ng middle to ng middle to lower part ng hair. Um, safety precautions din kumbaga para makaiwas sa error. Another advisable na another advice ay ano yung hindi lalagpas dapat na 90 meters yung leveling kasi mas mababawasan itong magka-error sa reading. So, the um, rod not held plant. Um, aside from holding the rod on a firm and definite point, it should also be held as nearly vertical as possible. If it is held of vertical, it will be intersected by the line of sight farther from the base and the reading will be much greater than, the, than what it should really be. The reading on the rod will be lowest when it is held plump. Dapat yung rod ay nakasetup ng straight vertical if possible. And madali naman ito mapansin using the cross here. Ang problema ay hindi mo naman, hindi mo naman alam if um, nakauwang siya palapit or palayo sa instrument. Um, may iwasan to by either waving the rod or attaching a leveling rod or rod level. So, next slide. Um, incorrect setting of target. Um, it is important to always handle the leveling rod carefully. The rod man at times fails to set properly the target when a high rod reading is made with it. During use, the target may slip downward because it is, it is not clamped firm firmly at the exact position signaled by the instrument man. Um, para maiwasan naman yung ganitong error, yung incorrect setting of target, um, the instrument man should always take a second sight on the target. Pagkatapos, ito iklamp. Pagkatapos, pagkatapos ito iklamp ng rodman para makasigurado na hindi ito dumulas. Um, sunod, um, unequal backside and foresight distances. 
um, in leveling work, it is usually good practice to make backside and corresponding foresight distances nearly equal. In such a practice, errors due to imperfect adjustment of the instrument and also those due to curvature and refraction are reduced or totally eliminated since the error in the backside is equal to that in the foresight. Um, sapat na magtansya gamit ang mata kapag normal lang sa, na leveling work. Pero if mas gusto mo na maging precise, edi mag pacing direct taping or mag stadja measurement ka. Pero hindi maganda gawin kapag may mga terrain at may mga steep slope. Um, last na principal error, um, yung natural errors. Um, these are the errors which are due to natural sources and could not be totally removed, but their effects can be reduced by applying corrections and good and using good judgment. So, kasama dito yung mga errors that includes Earth's curvature, ayan yung nasa una. So, ano pa? Um, atmospheric refraction, um, variation in temperature, wind, tsaka yung mga susunod pang reason. So, yung una, um, curvature of the Earth. Um, the effect of the curvature of the Earth is to increase the rod reading. From this source, the error amount to about 0 0.07 cm per 100 meters. This error is introduced even if the instrument use is in perfect adjustment. It, however, only occurs in extra long sites and when back sites and foresight distances are not made equal. Since site distances in ordinary leveling do not vary significantly, the resultant error arising from this source is so small and is considered a negligible quantity. Kapag di talaga may iwasan na mahaba yung distance ng site, um, may eliminate naman yung error by applying correction to the computed difference in elevation. Um, atmospheric refraction. The presence of heat waves on a hot day is a sign rapidly fluctuating refraction in the atmosphere. Reading errors are likely to occur when heat waves are present since it makes the rod appear unsteady when a, when a site is taken on it. Since the refraction is usually larger when sites are taken close to the ground surface, the line of sight should be established, established at least 1 meter above the ground. Because it may be impossible to read the rod when the heat waves are particularly intense. Leveling work should only be resumed when heat waves subside. So, sa atmospheric refraction, para mabawasan yung epekto ng nito, ang only way ay pagpapanatili na maikli ang susukatan na site. Yung epekto naman ng air na ito ay okay lang if normal leveling lang. Pero may instances kasi na kailangan precise yung leveling. Kaya kinukuha yung combined corrections for curvatures and refraction para maobserbahan ng, ma ng mas maayos yung rod reading. Next is temperature variations. Um, changes in temperature causes in leveling rods to either expand or contract and this could introduce errors when taking rod readings. To guard against such effects, Invar or nilvar graduated strips are used in on rods for precise leveling work. Heat also causes warping or twisting of the parts of a level. The liquid in the level vial expands and the bubble shortens when it is heated. Um, pwede mo apektuhan na to temporarily, temporarily yung adjustment ng mga instrument na pwede mag sa pagsala ng pagkuha ng accuracy sa rod. Kaya ina-advise ang paggamit ng surveying umbrella para maiwasan ng ganito yung error. Tsaka para hindi maingitan yung mga gagamitin ng instrument. <clears throat> Next is wind. A strong wind can shake a leveling instrument making it difficult to center the bubble in the level vial. It can also exert a sufficient amount of force to cause an extended rod to vibrate making it stand unsteady and hard to read or plumb. So, dito sa wind naman, um, kapag need mag-leveling na mahangin na araw, kailangan isecure na ni instrument man na maiwas sa hangin yung instrument. 
Pwede niya ilagay ito sa tabi ng puno or kahit sa likod ng building or tabi ng building para malesen yung hangin or matakpan ng mga puno or building. Yan. So, next, um, settlement of the instrument. In soft or towing ground, mud and swamps, the instrument may settle in the interval of time between rod readings. These sources of error is cumulative since every settlement of the instrument increases the computed elevations of all other observed points by the, uh, by the amount of the settlement. So, dito, um, may eliminate itong error na to if na-ensure na instrument man na nasa maayos niya na ilagay yung instrument. Advisable din pag ganito na maikling oras lamang yung pagkuha sa pagitan ng road readings. Um, faulty turning points. In differential leveling work, a poorly, chose, a poorly chosen turning point may be a source of error. This condition is similar to that resulting from settlement of the instrument. It is cumulative type of point from different setups of the level. It is important to select firm and solid turning points. They must also be easily identified. Care should be taken not to strike the rod against the turning point, point or to exert any pressure on it. So, dito, um, dapat binabantayan din ng instrument man yung galaw, lalo na sa turning point. At dapat na dun pa din yung rod sa dati niyang pwesto kapag gumawa pa ng bagong reading. So, ayun, natapos na yung lesson 15.1. Dito naman tayo sa... Lesson 15.2, yung common mistakes in leveling rod. Ayan, dito sa slide na ito, makikita natin yung um, limang reason. Yung misreading the rod, incorrect, incorrect recording, um, erroneous computation, rod not fully extended, move, at saka yung moving turning points. Ayan. Next slide. Um, missing, misreading the rod. Um, during the instrument man, during leveling, the instrument man may occasionally read the rod incorrectly. For example, he may read the 2.75 meter instead of 1.75 meter. This mistake most frequently occurs when the line of sight to the rod is partially obstructed by vegetation or other objects, the, or other objects in the field. Um, mas maganda na i-call out yung readings habang sinusukat para mapagkumpara ng instrument man at ng rod man yung kailangan, yung kanilang readings. Next, yung incorrect reading. Um, the recorder should always call out the readings as he records. Ayun, sabi nga dun sa una. Them in order to prevent the recording of incorrect values. To detect mistakes in recording rod readings, the best method is to read the rod, record the reading, and then cite the rod again to check if the value recorded is the correct reading. So dito, um, importante na naiintindihan ng recorder yung leveling process. Dapat na visualize niya yung operation na ginagawa niya na sa recording. Um, number three is erroneous computation. Although level notes only requires simple additions and subtractions, Mistakes in this computation are still committed. Yan. Kaya dapat na i-recheck natin para masiguradong tama yung information na nakuha or na-solve. Um, next, rod not fully extended. Um, when using a Philadelphia rod, it is important that it is fully extended when reading the high rod. The two sliding sections should lock properly into position. The clamp should also be tightened firmly to avoid the upper portion of the rod from sliding downward. Um, number five, a moving turning point. A turning point carelessly or accidentally move out if its position by a rod man will cause a serious mistake in leveling work. Um, this mistake could be prevented by using only stable and clearly defined turning points or by marking the positions of the rod with paint, lumber, crayon, or chalk. 
So dito, um, dapat yung palatandaan sa unang rod ay maayos para hindi magsala ang paglalagay uli ng rod pag nagkameron pa ng sunod na reading. Um, kasi pag nagsala yung um, lagay ng pangalawang rod, eh di magsasala na yung reading ng buong um, leveling process. Ayan. So, that will end the um, discussion in lesson 15.1 and lesson 15.2. Thank you. Good day, I am Dan Angela Morales and I'm going to continue the lesson 15. So, 15.3. Adjustment of the dumpy level. So, the manufacturer does not guarantee that the dumpy level will always remain in perfect adjustment. Therefore, it still has to be checked occasionally to determine if it has remained in proper adjustment. No amount of careful handling will assure that it will never get out of adjustment. Its moving parts will become loose and worn out after continu continued use in the field. So, keeping the dumpy level in adjustment should always be given utmost consideration if better results are desired in leveling operation. The level is so designed that field adjustments can be made without having to return the instrument to the manufacturer. So, the following are the three fields in adjustment often required for a dumpy level. So, these are the three fields. So, the first one is the adjustment of the crosshairs, adjustment of the level vial, and the adjustment of the line of sight. <coughs> the first one is the adjustment of the crosshairs. So, the reticle or the crosshair ring is adjusted to see to it that horizontal crosshair lies in a planar perpendicular to the vertical axis of the instrument. If the particular requirement is not satisfied, an error will occur each time a reading is made. So the procedure of testing. So the instrument is first approximately leveled, then one, one end of the horizontal crosshair is focused and sighted on some well-defined stationary point. The telescope is slowly turned about the vertical axis using the tangent screw to see if the point sighted appears to move along the hair throughout its length. If the point sighted remains on the horizontal hair, the crosshairs are in adjusted. If it departs from the crosshair, an adjustment is necessary. So how do we make the adjustment? So the adjustment is made by loosening two pairs of capstan headed screws which hold the reticle. An adjusted ad an adjustment pin is inserted into one of the holes of the screws to turn it slowly while, use, while using the pin as a lever. The reticle is then turned as necessary by trial or tap lightly with a light object to allow it to move into a correct position. So the testing procedure in the process of adjustment are repeated until the point no longer departs from the horizontal crosshair. So the second one is the adjustment of the level vial. The purpose of this adjustment is to make the axis of the level vial perpendicular to the vertical axis of the instrument. The procedure of testing. Align the level vial along an opposite pair of leveling screws and carefully center the bubble. Rotate the telescope through 90 degrees and again center the bubble by manipulating the other opposite pair of leveling screws. Then, turn the telescope through another 90 degrees such that this time it is positioned again along the first pair of opposite screws. If the level vial is in adjustment, the bubble will remain centered. If not, a field adjustment is necessary. So, this is how to make the adjustment. This time, bring the bubble halfway back to the center by raising or lowering one end of the level vial by means of a capstan screw. By manipulating the leveling screws, now bring the bubble exactly to center. Repeat the procedure of testing and continue to undertake in the corresponding adjustment until the bubble remains centered at any time the, the telescope is rotated end for end. If the adjustment has been performed correctly, the bubble should remain centered before and after reversal of the telescope. So the last, the last but not the least is the adjustment of the line of sight. The line of sight is adjusted to make it parallel to the axis of the level vial. There is always possibility that the line of sight of a dumpy level will be inclined either above or below the horizontal. Such, such a condition will introduce corresponding errors when determining differences in elevation. To check and adjust the line of sight, a procedure known as the two-peg test is employed. So there are two ways by which the test is undertaken. So uh, the two-peg test will be described in this lesson and the other one is will be explained in succeeding lesson. So this is uh, the two peg test, figure 15.1. So procedure of testing. Two pegs 60 to 90 meters apart are established on the ground. It is preferable that the two pegs have a considerable dif 
difference in elevation in order to arrive at more accurate test result. The instrument is set up and leveled in a location such that eyepiece is 20 cm or less in front of the road, held on one of the pegs at A. A rod reading A is taken on the rod held at point A by sighting through the objective, objective end of the telescope. In this procedure, the crosshairs will not be visible, but the field of view will be so small that its center may be determined easily by holding a pointed pencil on the rod. The telescope is then turned toward the rod, now held over the other peg at B, and a rod reading B is taken on it. So the instrument is next moved, set up, and leveled near B, where a second set of rod readings C and D are taken on the rod held at B and A respectively. The computed difference and elevation for the two setups are D E sub A is equals to A minus B and D E sub B is equals to D minus C. So if the two differences in elevation are equal, the line of sight is in adjustment. When the line of sight is inclined from the horizontal, the error in the line of sight for the distant A B is E. Considering the rod readings taken with the instrument setup near A and also near B, the true difference in elevation between A and B for each setup would be T D E. TDE sub A is equal to A minus B minus E. And TDE, TDE, minus, TDE sub B is equal to D minus E minus C. So, uh, also, TDE is equal to TDE sub A plus TDE sub B divided by 2 or equal to A minus B minus E plus D minus E minus C over 2. So, A minus B plus E plus D minus E minus C is equal to divided by 2 is equals to a minus b plus d mi minus c divided by 2 also. So, if d e sub a is not equal to d e sub b, the correct road reading at a with the instrument cells still set up near b is equals to d apostrophe is equals to c plus t d e equals c plus a minus b plus d minus c divided by 2. So, if the d is greater than d, the line of sight is inclined upward. If d is less than D apostrophe it is inclined downward. Also, it is advisable to draw a sketch of the ske of the setup and the observations made in the in the field to avoid confusion. So, uh, we are going to the making the adjustment. Before making any adjustment, the bubble is first brought to the center of the level vial. The adjustment is then made by moving the crosshair ring vertically until the line of sight cuts the rod at the apostrophe. If the line of sight is inclined upward, the capstan screw and stop at at the radical is loosened and the capstan screw at the bottom is tightened. The opposite is done if the line of sight is inclined downward. Two or, three tri two or three trials may be necessary to obtain the final adjustment. So, 15.4. This, this is a practice problem for the two peg test. So in the two peg test of a dumpy level, pif figure 15.2, the following obs observations were taken. So. Uh, rod reading on point A on point B and the instrument set up near A 1.505 meters and 2.054 meter. So the instrument set up near B on point on point A there will be 0 0.938 meter on point B there will be 1.449. So this is the sketch of the illustrative problem. So these are the requirements requirements. Determine if the line is in adjustment and explain your answer. If the line of sight is not in adjustment, determine the correct rod reading on A with, with the instrument still set up near B. Determine the error in the, the line of sight of, for the net distance AB. Explain how the line of sight of the instrument should be adjusted. So this, are, this is the solution. D sub A is equals to A minus B, which is 1.505 minus 2.054, which is equals to negative 0 0.549 meter. So the difference in elevation between A and B determined with instrument setup near A. So D sub B is equals to D minus C, which is equals to 0 0.938 equals to I min minus 1.449 is equals to negative 0 0.511 meter. Difference in elevation between A and B determined with instrument setup near B. So this is from um, the instrument setup on A, and this is the instrument setup near B. So it, since D sub A is not equal to D sub B, which is there is a difference, the line of sight is not in adjustment. So it does it is not in the right um, adjustment. So T D E is equal to D E sub A plus D E sub B divided by two. 
which is equals to negative 0 0.549 plus negative 0 0.511 divided by 2 which is equals to negative 0 0.513 meter so this is the true difference in elevation between a and b the instrument near a and instrument near b so d derivative is equals to c plus t d e is equals to 1.449 plus negative 0 0.530 which is equals to 0 0.919 meter this is the correct rod reading on a for a horizontal line of sight with instrument set up near b so a is equals to d minus d derivative is equals to 0 0.938 minus 0 0.9 0 0.919 so it is equals to 0 0.019 meter so 0 0.019 meter is the error in the line of sight so since d is greater than the derivative the line of sight is inclined upward to adjust the line of sight loosen up to adjust the line of sight loosen the upper capstan headed screw and tighten the lower screw until the horizontal crosshair reads 0 0.919 meter on the rod held at A while the instrument is still set up near B. So this is the adjustment of dumpy level, which is the lesson 15. Thank you. Now, we will be discussing lesson 16 under the topic measurement of vertical distances. Under lesson 16, we have two Parts. Yung first is alternate procedure for two peg test and yung pangalawa ay curvature and refraction. Dito muna tayo sa first topic which is alternate procedure for two peg test. This lesson will show another procedure by which the two peg test is employed to check the line of sight and how to obtain the necessary data for making the adjustment when it is needed. It is based upon the principle that if the line of sight of the instrument is not horizontal, it will deviate up or down in direct proportion to the horizontal distance from the instrument to the rod. So yung tatandaan natin dito is yung principle na Kung yung line of sight daw ng instrument ay hindi horizontal, it will either deviate up or down. Ibig sabihin, siya ay magiging inclined. Up or down. Indirect proportion doon sa distance, horizontal distance, mula sa instrument, papunta doon sa rod. Ayan, meron tayo dito ng given figure para mas maintindihan natin yung sa two-peg test. Ayun. Una nating uh, symbol dito is yung A. Yan. Wherein it is the rod reading on A with instrument set up at point M. So ito yung ating M. Yan. Sa gitna. M. Rod reading on A. So ito. Ito yun. Ayan. Tata. And then, next symbol is B. Which is the rod reading on point B with instrument set up at M. Ito yun. Ito yung point B. Ito yung ating rod reading. Ayan. Sunod naman is yung point C or yung ating symbol na C. It is the rod reading on A with instrument set up at point P. So pag C, ayan, nandito siya measure from point P. So ito yan, yun o. Ito yung C. Ayan. Sa point A. Hanggang nun sa baba. Then, yung ating D is the rod reading on B with instrument set up at P. Ito naman yun. Yan o. Small letter D. Hanggang sa baba. Yan. 
kung mapapansin natin, lahat ng kanilang mga directions is, or line of sight is, yan o, pa, uh, hindi sila horizontal. Meron mga nakadiagonal sila. Ito. And then, o, sa A, yan. Sa B. And ito, C. Yan. Next is C prime. Ito naman, C prime. Or yung correct rod reading on A for a horizontal line of sight. C prime is ito na, sa horizontal line na. Ano? Yan, ito, horizontal line na. From here, pababa. Then, D prime, which is the correct rod reading on B for a horizontal line of sight. For a horizontal line of sight. Ito siya. Yan, nakita niyo yung horizontal line. Yan. Ito. So, hanggang din sa baba. Rod reading. Then, next is yung ating distance A. Ito, D sub A. Or yung horizontal distance between points P and A. Ito yung A natin. Yan. So, ito yun. D sub A. Yan. And D sub B naman, ito, is the horizontal distance between points B and P. So, ito yung P. Ito yung B. Yan. Ito ang ating D Sub B. Yan. Itong horizontal line na yan. yan. Sorry, medyo tagilid. Then next is yung error in the reading on the dear rod or E sub N. E sub N kasi near. Ayan. Ito siya. Pero, ito naman is, ito din. Yan, ito. Yan. So, ito. E sub N din yan. Yan din yan. And then, E sub F is the error in the reading on the far rod held at B. Ito naman siya. Ito. Far rod, E sub F. Kasi far rod. Yan. Ito naman yung error in the reading on the far rod held at point B. Then yung ating I ito which is the inclination of the line of sight in the net distance. Ito siya. Yan. I. So yan. Next, yung sa under alternate procedure for two peg test pa rin, yung number one is procedure of testing. Two pegs designated as A and B are set 60 to 90 meters apart on fairly level ground. Kita naman natin yun dun sa figure kanina, na yung pegs ay designated as A and B. Yun daw pala ay 60 to 90 meters apart on fairly level ground. The instrument is first set up and leveled at a point M which is equally distant from both pegs. So yung point M kanina, kita naman natin, nasa gitna siya ng um, point A and point B kung saan nandun yung dalawang peg. Then rod readings A and B are taken on a, point A, and B, respectively. The true difference in elevation between two pegs is denoted as TDE, 
which is equal to the difference in elevation at point M, which is equal to A minus B. Since the two pegs are equally distant from the instrument, this difference will be correct even though the level is not in adjustment. The instrument is then moved and set up at point P within 2 to 3 meters from A. Ayun, kita natin kanina yung point P is medyo uh, malayo or may distance siya from point A. It is preferable but not necessary to set up one line with the two pegs. The distance from P to A or yung ating distance sub A or D sub A, and from P to B, or D sub B, are measured either by taping or by the stadia method. Red readings C and D are taken on A and B, respectively, and the difference in elevation calculated as follows. Ayan, so yung ating... Rad reading C is taken sa A and rad reading D is taken sa B. Ayun. Ngayon naman, yung ating difference in elevation sub P is equal to C minus D. Ito. Ayan. Ngayon naman, para mas maintindihan natin yung ating um, formula kanina, ito yung figure para mas makita natin kung saan ba yung mga values na to. For the true difference in elevation, this will be equal to DE sub M, which is equal to A ito, A minus B. Yan. And then, yung ating D is sub B is equal naman sa C. Ito. C minus D. Ito. Yan. If D sub M is equal to D sub P, the line of sight is parallel to the axis of the level tube. And it can be concluded that the line of sight is horizontal. If not, D sub P is called the erroneous or false difference in elevation. And the inclination of the line of sight from the horizontal is I is equal to D E sub M minus D E sub P is equal to A minus B minus C minus D. Ito, kung makikita natin dito, kung equal daw yung D sub M at D sub P, horizontal yung ating line of sight. Pero kung hindi naman, yung D sub P natin will be called erroneous or false difference in elevation. Ito yung tawag sa kanya. And dito naman sa formula, yung I, which is yung inclination of the line of sight, will be equal dun sa difference ng ating D sub M and D sub P. Na, alam naman natin yung values ng dalawa from the past formula, which is yung D sub M nga is equal to A minus B, and yung D sub P is equal to C minus D. From figure 16, Dash 1, the error in the reading on the far rod at B can be determined by proportion as follows. So by proportion, yung ating ratio and proportion niya. Mamaya, explain ko pa kung paano nga ba nangyari yun. E sub F all over I, which is inclination, is equal to D sub B all over D sub B minus D sub A. Or, 
kung i-manipulate. Ito is ililipat natin, yung i is ililipat natin sa kabilang side. E sub f is equal to d sub b all over d sub b minus d sub a multiplied by the inclination. The correct rod reading d prime at the far rod which is held at b for a horizontal line of sight is determined by subtracting algebraically from the rod reading d the amount of e sub f. Thus, yung ating d prime ito is equal to rod reading d minus e sub f or yung error. Next, i-explain ko ng mas um, ayos yung kung ba't nga ba ganito yung mga formula na ating mga nakuha. So, ito yung ating I. Inclination ito. Yan. Na makukuha natin yung value from A. Ito. C. D. And B. Ayan. Then, it is ko muna. Doon naman sa ating proportionality. Ito. Yung sa E sub F all over I. Yan. Ito yun, E sub F, tapos ito yung ating I. Ito yung I. Ito naman yung D sub B at D sub A. D sub B minus D sub A. Ayan. Sabi kanina, yun daw ating um, deviation ng line of sight is proportional doon sa horizontal distance. Sabi kanina doon sa first part, doon sa principle. Kaya ito, itong I sub F I sub F, sorry. Yung ating I is ito. All over E sub F would be equal sa ating D sub B all over D sub B minus D sub A. Or, ayun. Yung sa ratio and proportion. Then, for distance or D prime, which is equal to D minus E sub F. So, ayan. Ito siya. D minus E sub F. Ito. Yan yung ating magiging D prime. Yes. Next. If D is greater than D prime, the line of sight is inclined upward. Ayan, upward. Pero kapag ka naman, D is less than D prime, it is inclined downward. Similarly, the error in the reading on the near rod at A is same lang din sa kanilang formula. Napaltan na yung ating E sub F naging E sub N and yung D sub B is naging D sub A. Same lang din. The correct rod reading C prime at the near rod held at A for a horizontal line of sight is determined by also subtracting algebraically from the rod reading C the amount of E sub N or C prime is equal to C minus E sub N. To check the computations, the differences in elevation computed from the two corrected rod readings, C prime and D prime, 
should be equal to the true difference in elevation, which is A minus B. Thus, A minus B should be equal to C prime minus D prime. Ayun, same lang din naman kanina. Ito, E sub N, which is ito. And yung ating I, inclination. And yun pa din, DA, and ito naman, DA. And DB minus DA. Yan. So, yan. And sa C prime, yun din. All, papalitan lang natin yung C. Gagawin lang natin C. And then, yung E sub F kanina, dun sa D prime, ay gagawin lang natin E sub N. Ito. And yun nga, so for checking, kailangan daw equal si A minus B sa C prime minus D. Prime. Under naman, under pa rin ng alternate procedure for two peg test, yung making the adjustment. The adjustment is then made with the instrument still in position at point P. The horizontal crosshair is moved up or down accordingly by means of the capstan headed screws. One screw is loosened slightly and the opposite one is tightened. A similar amount thus moving. Apparently, the position of the horizontal crosshair on the leveling run. This is continued until the desired reading D prime is obtained. Several trials may be necessary to get an exact reading the horizontal pair of capstan screws should be left untouched to avoid disturbing the previous adjustment speed. Ayun. Now let's move on to part 2, 16.2 or curvature and refraction. The effects of curvature and atmospheric refraction are taken into account in leveling work since the measurements are made in vertical planes. And these effects all occur in the same plane. The combined effects are represented in figure 16-2. Due to Earth's curvature, a horizontal line departs from a level line by 0 0.0785 meters in 1 kilometer, varying as the square of the length of the line. This expression for Earth curvature is based on the mean radius of the Earth, which is about 6,371 kilometers. In the given figure, the vertical distance between the horizontal line and the level line, or yung BD, is a measure of the Earth's curvature. So ito yung ating figure. Ayan. In physics, we learn that when a ray of light passes through air strata of different densities, it is refracted or bent towards the denser medium. This bending is referred to as refraction. Yung bending daw ng ating ray of light. Yun daw ay refraction. The effect of refraction is greatest when the line of sight passes near the ground or when it skims through bodies of water where temperature differences are large. It is here that large variations in air density occur. During summer, heat waves or boiling air indicated rapidly changing refraction. Atmospheric refraction varies with atmospheric conditions. Under ordinary conditions, it is approximately equal to 0 0.0110 meters in 1 kilometer 
also varying directly as the square of the length of the line. This is about 1 7 the effect of the curvature of the earth. Yun na banggit kanina. Na? 0 0.0785 meters. In figure 16-2, it can be seen that due to the refraction, a ray of light, which apparently is the straight line AB, ito, actually follows the curved path AC. Yung pala. Ayun. nag appear lang daw na through level A, point B yung nakikita, pero it is actually point C. The angular displacement resulting from the refraction is variable. It depends upon the angle the line of sight makes with the vertical and the surrounding atmospheric conditions. Yun the angle is nakadepende sa angle, yung angular displacement is depending upon the angle na na may make no line of sight doon sa ating vertical. Dito. Ayan, dito. And depende rin sa surrounding atmospheric conditions. The combination of the Earth's curvature and atmospheric refraction causes the telescope's line of sight to vary from a level line by approximately 0 0.0785 minus 0 0.0110 or 0 0.0675 meters in 1 kilometer, varying as the square of the sight distance in kilometers. This may be represented by a mathematical equation as follows h prime is equal to 0 0.0675 k squared wherein you adding h prime daw is the departure of a telescope line departure of a telescope line of sight from a level line Ay, sorry departure of a telescope line of sight from a level line. Ito daw is in meters. Whereas yung k, which is length of the line of sight, is in kilometers. The value of 0 0.0675 is called the coefficient of refraction. So, siya yung coefficient of refraction. Its value actually varies to a certain degree for different elevations, but is taken with an average value of 0 0.0675. For surveys of ordinary precision, corrections for the combined effects of curvature and refraction may be omitted. The correction is only necessary in precise leveling work and where the difference in length of backsight and foresight distances is great. If the backsight distance were exactly to the foresight distance for each setup of the instrument, the errors caused by atmospheric refraction and Earth's curvature would cancel each other. Since refraction changes rapidly with changes in temperature, it is advisable to undertake precise leveling during cloudy days or at mid-afternoon on sunny days when the ground and air are uniformly warm. So next is our illustrative problems. Meron tayong dalawang topic kanina. Now, meron naman tayong illustrative problems for the topics. Problem 1. For two peg test. 
in the two peg test of a dumpy level, the following observations are taken. Ito yung table, wherein yung rod reading on point A and then point B. And yung instrument set up near M. For point A, yung instrument set up near M is 0 0.296 meters. And then point B is 0 0.910 meters. For instrument set up near P, yung ating rod reading is 1.563 meters for point A on point A and 2.140 meters on point B. Point M is equidistant from both A and B. While P is 2.50 meters away from A, along the extension of line AB, and 79.27 meters from B. Yung ating mga requirements na pinapahanap is determine the true difference in elevation between points A and B, check if the line of sight is in adjustment, if the instrument needs to be adjusted, determine the following false difference in elevation, inclination of the line of sight, and the error in reading on the far rod. Next is with the level still set up at P, determine the rod reading on B, to which the line of sight should be adjusted. Explain how the line of sight should be adjusted. And the last requirement is perform the customary check. Sa book, meron ang given na figure, meron ang given na solutions. Tatry ko lang na may si explain kung paano ba nakuha yung mga values. So for requirement at A, kailangan daw yung True difference in elevation between points E and B. Ito, T, D, E. Which is equal sa difference in elevation sa M. Which is equal nga sa A minus B. Kukunin lang natin yung values for A and B. Then subtract. 0 0.296 minus 0 0.910 is equal to negative 0 0.614 meters. So, ito yung true difference in elevation between A and B. From this value and this. And then for the next requirement, check if the line of sight is in adjustment. So, para malaman natin kung in adjustment siya, kailangan maging equal yung D sub P sa D sub M. Parang dun sa sinabi kanina. Para maging horizontal yung light of sight. Ito naman, D is P dito. Yan. Is equal to C minus D. So yung values natin is ito, 1.563 meters for C minus 2.140 meters for D. So this will be equal to negative 0. 577 meters. Kung mapapansin natin, yung D is sub M and D is sub P ay hindi equal. Kaya naman, dun sa ating requirement C na pinapahanap yung false difference in elevation inclination of the line of sight and the error in the reading on the far run. Ayan, yung false difference in elevation is equal dun sa DEP. D is sub P. Yung sabi kanina dun sa slides. Dun sa lesson. Na yung D is sub P daw is yung false difference in elevation kapag or kung hindi siya equal dun sa DE sub M. In this case, 
yung falls difference in elevation natin is negative 0.577 meters. And next, hanapin naman yung inclination. Erase ko lang. Yung inclination, which is computed by subtracting DE sub B from DE sub M. Or kung naalala natin, it is A minus B minus C minus D. Since given na naman dito yung mga values, ito for D sub M and ito for D sub B. D sub P. Subtract lang. And then makukuha natin yung inclination of the line of sight, which is negative 0 0.037 meters. Ito. Answer. And then for the error, sabi kanina, error in the reading on the far rod, E sub F. So for E sub F, it will be equal to yung L sub B all over L sub B minus L sub A multiplied by I. So substitute lang natin yung values. For L sub B, 79.27 meters all over L sub B na 79.27 meters minus L sub A na 2.50 meters. Ito yung mga values na yun. And given na rin pala yung ating L sub B minus L sub A. So pwede ito na lang din yung ating gamitin. So, the error in reading on the far rod is yung 79.27 all over 76.77 multiplied by the inclination negative 0 0.037 meters, which is equal to negative 0 0.038 meters. Ayan na yung E sub F. For our... Next requirement, um, determine the rod reading on B, which the line of sight should be adjusted. Ayan, so yung D prime. Ito yung rod reading, which is equal to D minus E sub F. Substitute lang natin yung values wherein D is equal to 2.140 minus negative 0 0.038. So, bakit um, D prime yung ginamit natin? Kasi, ang hinahanap is yung rod reading on B. Eh, sa B, ang ating hinahanap na rod reading is yung value ng ating D prime. So yun, subtract lang natin to. 2.140 minus negative 0 0.038. We will get the answer 2.178. So ito yung explanation. Since D is less than D prime, the line of sight isn't lined downward. Kung maaalala natin kanina, din sa discussion, sabi ay pagka daw greater yung ating D, dun sa D prime, upward daw yung inclination. Whereas, kapag ka nga less, yung ating D, sa ating D prime, downward ang inclination. So, to adjust, set the target on the leveling rod at A, reading equal to D prime, and bring the line of sight on this mark by moving the horizontal crosshair upwards. Do this by Loosening the lower capstan screw and tighten the upper capstan screw. Ayun. For the last requirement, perform the customary check. So, it's a check lang kung a-arrive na ba sa answer. Ayun. Dito. Compute yung E sub N para makuha yung C prime. 
para may equate natin din sa a minus b yung c prime minus d prime ito yung value ng e sub n natin yan 2.50 divided by 79.27 minus 2.50 multiplied by negative 0.037. It will be equal to 0 0.0012 meters. Yun yung error in the rod on the near rod at A. Para makuha natin yung C prime, yung isusubtract natin yung E sub N from C, which is 1.563 minus negative 0.0012. Ayan, it is equal to 1.564 approximately ito. Then, para ma-check, kailangan natin equate yung A minus B. Ito. Ito siya. Ito yung checking. Ayan. Ito yung ating checking. A minus B is equal to C, my C prime minus D prime. So yan, 0 0.296 minus 0 0.910 is it equal to 1.564 minus 2.178. So ayun, pinakita naman dito na equal yung ating um, a minus B and C minus D. Since the two quantities are equal, it is then safe to assume that the above solution is correct. Ayan. Erase ko lang. Then next. Ito naman is problem on curvature and refraction. Determine the combined effects of the Earth's curvature and atmospheric refraction on site distances of 60, 90, 120, 150, and 500 meters. So, i-explain ko lang dito is yung first two since pare-parehas naman yung ating gagawin for the rest. For the 60 meters, para makuha natin yung kanyang um, combined effects of their curvature and atmospheric refraction, Kailangan natin limitin yung formula for h prime, which is 0 0.0675k squared. So, yung k natin is supposed to be in kilometers. Kaya naman, ito is nagkaroon ng over 1,000, 6 meters to. Ayan. Kailangan convert to kilometers. So, ito na yung magiging value natin. 0 0.0675 multiplied by 60 all over 1,000 quantity squared is equal to 0 0.000243 meters. And ganun din sa 90. 90 meters. Ayan. Yung formula. And then, gagawin lang natin in kilometers yung value ng k. So, i-divide natin sa 1,000 para makuha yung answer. So, ayun. For the rest, ganun lang din yung gagawin. Kailangan kunin yung value ng ating k in kilometers. Ng ating distance in kilometers. Yan. For the next, I think ito na yung last na illustrative problem. Curvature and refraction. For curvature and refraction. Two points A and B are 525.850 meters apart. A level is set up on the line between A and B and at a distance of 240.500 meters from A. If the rod reading on A is 3.455 meters and that on B is 2.806 meters, determine the difference in elevation between the two points, taking into account the effects of curvature and atmospheric 
reflection. So, nagkaroon tayo ng given na h prime sub a and h prime sub b. Since, kailangan natin ma-determine yung difference ng elevation between sa dalawang points na consider yung effects of curvature and atmospheric refraction. refraction. Kaya naman, kailangan muna natin kunin yung effect na yun for A and B. For distance A and distance B. Or for rad reading A and rad reading B. Parang yun yung mas better term. So, una muna natin gagawin is to find H prime sub A para makuha natin yung effect. So, yun, kukunin lang natin yung ating distance na na set up from A mula dun sa ating level na 240.500 meters. Ayan, 240.500 meters to make it kilometers divide 1,000 squared. So, ito yung answer. 0 0.003904 or approximately 0 0.004 meters. And then, for H sub B, para makuha natin yung um, distance nung level dun sa point B, isusubtract natin ito, yung total distance from the two points dito sa isusubtract natin yung dalawa yung total distance between A and B and yung distance between the level and point A ayun so yun yung magiging K natin so ito na nga yung sundin pa natin yung formula 0.0675 Multiplied by 525.850, ito, minus 240.500, ito, na distance from A, all over 1,000 quantity squared. Yan. So, yung ating answer will be, according sa book, is ito, 0 0.005496, or approximately 0 0.005. Ayan, para makuha natin yung A prime or corrected rad reading dun sa A, kailangan natin isubtract yung uh, effect of curvature. Kasi sabi nga kanina, yun daw, uh, ito is affected by yung effect ng curvature and refraction on the site. So, A na rad reading A minus H prime sub A is equal to 3.455 na given ito minus 0 0.004 na nakuha natin dito sa H sub A. This will now be equal to 3.451 meters for B prime. Ganun din yung gagawin. Ikaw ang consider lang yung corrected, ay, Rather, yung rad reading on B, yung given rad reading on B, which is 2.806 meters, tsaka yung H prime sub B na nakuha natin kanina. Or yung 0 0.005 meters. So, yun. Subtract lang, then answer is 2.801. And for our difference in elevation, so subtract lang natin yung corrected rad reading on A and corrected reading on B. So yung values 3.451 subtract natin with 2.801 meters which is magkakaroon ng value na 0 0.65 meters. Ito yung difference in elevation between A and B, considering the effect of curvature and refraction. And 
that's all thank you